Hey guys, what is up? Ilya's here, and I'm going to take a peek at the uh, CB.21 Smite Tactics Hand of the Gods patch notes here. First impressions. All right, so what's new? We've got an AFK timer, which is really cool. Um, let's just see what it is here. Once the AFK flag has been placed on a player, their turn timer will reduce from 90 seconds to 15 seconds unless they perform an action which would then restore their turn timer to 90 seconds. And then you have three turns of AFK. Okay. Um, actions consist of the following. Playing a card, moving a unit, selecting a unit, or selecting a card. So you've got one turn of, oops, I forgot to tag, tab back in. Then the second turn is 15 seconds. And then the next turn is 15 seconds. And then the next turn is 15 seconds. And then you lose. Okay, emotes. Good luck, you rock. Amazing. Good game. Oops, curses, thanks. And laugh. Laugh, of course, is the most important. There's a raw. We've already seen, uh, we've already heard the raw laugh from Tactics. So I can't wait for that one. And you can also mute your opponent, which is reasonable. Leader skins. <clears throat> Purely cosmetic. And feature customized emotes and voice lines. Fair enough. You can unlock them through core packs and the crafting system. Celestial Isis, Eldritch Ra, Heaven's Rave, Zeus, New Horizons, Nuwa, Grim Horseman, Guan Yu, Torment, Bologna, Dreadbeard, Poseidon, Pixel Buster, Freya. Cool. Cool beans. Oh, there they are. Of course, we know what these look like from Smite. New leader, Nox, is a ranged... Roman units, uh, Roman leader, sorry, that sets his ability is to set an enemy attack range to melee until the start of your next turn. This character is going to be insane. Like, okay, so Bologna's decent. Bologna's pretty, pretty decent. I mean, even at the, at the last tournament here, Rome was, Rome was one of the most picked, which is pretty impressive. Um, here, I'll, I'll pull up the stats here. The tournament stats. Rome was one of the most picked um, classes overall. I, I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, well, now you definitely can't see it. <laughs> All right. Let's see, we can we can do this. We can do this. And I need to scroll over. No, it's, it's not going to show you. All right, well, regardless, Norse was one of the most picked factions, and Nox is going to be insane because melee units are at a severe disadvantage to ranged units. Gives all the ranged units pardon, basically, and pardon's pretty nuts, so there we go. Apollo is Greek. It's a rare three mana, one three. It's ranged and can attack twice per turn. Now, this is essentially, th th this card is very interesting to me because on the surface, a range that it can, can attack twice per turn is pretty good, but, it's only got one attack, right? So you got to think if you if you're attacking twice, it's great because two damage instances is on paper better than one damage instance because it's more flexible. However, that also means you're taking return damage twice, and most of the time, if you take return damage twice with three HP, you're gonna be dead. So it's kind of tricky because you know it's. It's a cool concept, but in order for Apollo to be good, he has to survive the turn that you develop him. And Greece doesn't have any major attack buffs. The only thing it's got is Deathbringer, which doubles attack value. Apollo doesn't care if you double his attack value, because then it goes up to two. Woo! So... On the surface, Apollo seems really nuts, but I just don't know what you're going to take out because a lot of what makes Greek good is that almost everything has a, a very solid war cry effect. Apollo doesn't have that. And when he's on board, occasionally he just does two damage. And then it's a three mana deal too, and it's not too good. So Apollo is extremely interesting. It's going to be a card that I want to watch but I don't know that he's going to be competitive. 
Enraged Norse. Three mana gain plus four plus zero for your leader, and your leader dies at the end of at the end of your turn. So that seems really good. <laughs> like if you get if you draw this card, you just hold it in your hand until A, your leader is going to die anyway from return damage, or B, until you can win the game with like enrage plus siege, right? So Combined with Gift of Munin, which is the next one, I think the buff Freya or the buff Odin, honestly, it's probably going to be buff Odin. Um, actually, no. It's a debate. You could do either. But buff leader Norse, I think, is going to come back, and it's thanks to these two cards here. Uh, Gift of Munin is zero mana whenever your leader attacks, draw a card. Okay, this does not need to be zero mana. I'm telling you right off the bat, I'm putting this in every single Norse deck I've ever made, because... You don't usually draw your entire deck with Norse, right? Generally, you're sitting with 10 to 15 cards still left in your deck by the end of the game. Gift of Munin says, if you draw this card, hey, I can cycle like three or four or even five cards because your leader is attacking constantly in Norse because you're trying to push damage whenever you can. Um, I think this card is extremely good, um, probably a little over the point of balance. Hyena, a rare 2-mana two 2-2, two -two, gain plus 1, plus 1 whenever a friendly beast enters the battlefield. So this is, I guess, better Basilisk, because you, you don't want to play Basilisk. But And, and when Nuwa was released, the first things that we were all thinking about in the community was Nuwa Beast deck, right? Because you can just buff everything up. Well, it turns out that Nuwa Beast deck can be very snowball and very good, but it just doesn't have the same kind of reaction and and win from behind ability that Guan Yu spell damage control slash mid-range style has. So it turned out that the Nua Beast deck idea, while it was a good idea, didn't actually win very often. So we didn't we I think we saw like five, four or five of the of the Nua decks that were in the uh, tournament last Saturday were actually beast decks. I would have to double check that, but it wasn't a very high number, especially because there were 78 decks in the entire tournament, and only a very, very small portion of those were actually Nuwa decks. Uh, I think that kind of speaks for itself. But maybe with this Hyena card, if you're able to develop this and then play beast upon beast upon beast, maybe this becomes very viable because then you're playing you're basically getting new buff every single time you play a beast, and then you can also new buff. So you can get up to plus two, plus two on a card, on the hyena card in one turn, which could be quite valuable. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I think if we have more one mana options for beasts, then a hyena would pick up more. Because then if you think about it, it's hyena on two, and then on three it's a one mana beast plus new buff. Um, but, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens because Hyena could be quite influential. I think at the very least it's going to be an excellent starter card. Um, I'm currently doing a bit of a free-to-play run-through, and my only deck right now is uh, Buff the Beast's Nuwa, and that Hyena is going to get crafted. <laughs> uh, Rata Tosker. Norse. Rare 2 mana melee. 2 3. Whenever this unit attacks, deal 1 random damage to an enemy. So Summoning Stone, Leader, Unit structure whatever um two mana two three is above the the standardized curve technically um for stat lines so i expect to see rototosker c play just because it's a damn good two drop and the one random damage is just kind of icing on the cake three health on the second turn is actually pretty relevant um the only faction that can the only faction that, that can eloquently deal with that is either Ra with Magma Slam or Odin with buff, auto, and one extra damage from somewhere. So I expect to see Rata Tosker be quite popular. Um, but again, it's random damage, so maybe it will fall out of favor. Uh, I just think the stat line is quite excellent. Siphon Mind for Chinese. Two mana, deal two damage to a leader, and draw a card. If this right here turns into buff the leader decks this might see a tech in just to deal with that and 
simultaneously, you might see the Roman card that does four damage to a leader. Hey, maybe that one is now not good because it's never going to be good, uh, but it might be a necessary tech end uh, because the, there's no other card in the game that, that does that much to a leader other than like backstab. So we'll see how powerful the Norse buff a leader is and we'll go from there. But Siphon Mind might actually be quite a decent card at the end of the day. You'd have to be careful though because it is two mana deal two. There's the draw card, which is wonderful because card draw is underrepresented, in my opinion, in Smite Tactics. And I love to see more card draw aspects. And in this case, it's just attached to, hey, I'm going to poke your leader at the same time. So at, at the worst, it's a two mana draw card. Could be worse, I guess. Visual representation, improved sound effects, HUD changes. Okay, we've got a container for the combat log, which is the tabby thing on the left. An emote button, which of course we know about. And we have moved the position of the enemy's leader ability to no longer block the play space. Okay, yeah, because you're, you're, the leader ability was like up here, and then there's also a couple of squares up there, so you, you had to like squeak your mouse around it. Could have been interesting. All right, improved card casting. Okay, so this is going to be quite interesting to see, not from my hand. I don't care what it looks like from my hand. I want to know what I can see of my opponent's hand, because I want to be able to count cards, and I want to see, okay, you did Web of Word, whoop, that card slips back in right there, and I can track it right across the screen, screen as we go. And then you top decked here, and I can track it across the screen, because currently it's quite difficult, and most of the time I'll end up getting it wrong because I'm looking at it, and then, oops, looks like, you know, when you mouse over the card, it became pfft, this big and I couldn't see anything. And then you moused over another one when I glanced down for a second. Now I have no idea what you're mousing over to completely lost track of everything. Anyway, uh, new camera angles to victory and discreet defeat screen. Yay! Maybe it doesn't just say black screen, click to continue. Balance, Chow Feng. Health increased from 4 to 5. Fury health increased from 4 to 5. Soul increased mana cost from 2 to 3. Woohoo! Yay! Woohoo! A weakening curse is now permanent, which I totally agree with. That was straight out of my video, that hour and ten long behemoth. I think weakening curse being permanent is quite relevant because there is no point to setting somebody's attack to one for one freaking turn. Now you can set them their attack to one, do your thing, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then you come back around the next turn and they're like, yeah, yeah, I've, I've still got a, you know, a one attack Sylvanas. Yay. <laughs> but that, I love that change because I suggested it. Also, um, the soul increased mana cost from two to three is very good. Soul is a very powerful two drop and it had a charge effect and it was brutal absolutely brutal from web of word it will still be absolutely brutal from web of word but at least now it's not a six mana play it's a seven mana play and for those of you saying oh, that doesn't matter norse is still gonna kill you Woo! you know it, it does matter it matters quite a bit that one extra mana could be a leader buff onto that soul right it could be just another um another what, what spell am I thinking of? Uh, Frenzy or Siege. You know, it could be a cast of those spells. That one mana is very relevant because Norse doesn't win the game before uh, after 10 mana. Like, once you get to 10 mana, Norse almost always loses that game in almost any matchup. Unless you're against another aggro deck. But that's besides the point. My point is, your, your mana efficiency in Norse is always extremely important, more so than any other faction in the game. And mana efficiency moving soul up from two to three is gonna be very, very relevant. Um, Fury health increased is nice, and Chaofeng health increased is nice. I don't expect them to see too much play, but we'll see, you know, the, the charge Fury thing could come back, but I, I doubt it. I think Norse is just, just plenty of options. Uh, to charge before they start going to fury. All right, um, fish, fixed an issue where players are unable to draw Roman gods from Touch of Midas. Thank Twisted for that one. Twisted and Strixus spent an ungodly amount of time, 
bug testing that. They did 70 times touch of minus. 70 times. And they don't have dev commands to add it to their hands. So they had to draw touch of minus 70 times. Yeah. Um, fixed the issue where Battle Rage could not buff your leader, which tilted some new players, I absolutely know for certain. Um, Reign of Arrows would not deal damage to the Sapling or the Inferno Cannon, thank goodness, because that was super annoying. Because you would play your Inferno Cannon, and then you'd be stuck like, you know, I, I can't actually kill this Inferno Cannon. I, I literally can't kill it. It's body blocked, I can't melee it. Um, if I spawn a Venator, it just kills it. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I actually just can't kill Inferno Cannon. At all. And it's just doing two damage to my stone every single turn. And then I drew Rain of Arrows, and he's just played another Inferno Cannon. So I still can't kill him. And now I'm F6-ing, because I'm sad. Um, Vulcan would occasionally... would. Well, not occasionally. The Vulcan would have charge if it was spawned from uh, Book of the Dead um, or a Ritual Tribute if you Phantom Grasped it and then it died and then you Ritual Tributed it, whatever. It would it would have charge, so that's a thing that doesn't need to happen. <laughs> um, leaders would have their cost reset to three after using appeasement? Oh, baby! That's considered a bug. Okay, so, so, I'm super excited because I like appeasement. All right, so if you if you play appeasement, it cuts all the costs of every single card in your hand, minus two. But, because the because the way the spell worked, the spell would cast, changing all of your mana costs, and then your leader would die, and then your leader would come back into your hand. So in this, the way that this is, I'm so excited, because now you're going to have a one mana leader after using appeasement, which is so good. That is so good. Honestly, like I've been saying appeasement could appeasement raw could be like a tier a, a, a low tier one deck or a high tier one deck or a, you know it, and if you don't hit appeasement then it's like a tier two deck. but I think with this change, like appeasement is a real thing. And eventually when Isis actually gets some minions that are decent, appeasement Isis is gonna be nuts. So, I cannot wait to see what the future of appeasement is, and I'm sure it's going to annoy the absolute crap out of everybody that plays against it. Because that is a one-mana leader. That is insanely good. Honestly, that's a turn four play now. Because before it was a turn three play. You'd, you'd uh, do, basically do nothing on, on turn one. On turn three, then, if you didn't have any card draw in hand, you would just appeasement right away. And then, you know keep playing the game with whatever buffed minions you had in your hand but now now you can wait until turn four which means you draw more cards which means you deal more damage because it doesn't matter how much your leader gets poked so then you can play appeasement on your leader and then play your leader for one mana effectively healing your leader after still doing something with your leader that turn so oh my goodness that is actually very important and that's under bug fixes. Ah. Okay. Fix an issue where Inferno Cannon would receive the buff from March. So Inferno Cannon could move when you marched it. And it's a structure and structures should not move. I hope it still gets the attack buff though. Because it's still Roman. Uh, Fix an issue where players went unable to silence Wukong's ox form. Okay. I didn't know about that one. Um, basically Wukong's ox form would knock you back. So cool. Uh, also, occasionally you would spawn in as Wukong's ox form, and then it would knock players back immediately. Wukong is a buggy freaking character, let me tell you something. But either way, I think that's the end of my patch notes here. Let's just end on these uh, lovely, lovely, lovely um, cards. No, actually, no, we're ending. We're ending on this. We're ending on this right here. Yeah, that's what we're ending on. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the game.